Chris Sharma is an American rock climber, one of the sport's greatest personalities ever, long regarded as the absolute number one, especially after he was the first in the world to climb 9A+, the realization biography wrote. For a long time he had the title of the strongest climber in the world. We met at the International Climbing Film Festival in Teplice and Admetui, and we were far from just talking about climbing. I was much more interested in the mental setup of this phenomenal athlete, along with what it must have been like when he left the number one position and when he handed it over to Adam Ondra. Suddenly we were talking about the man's ability to manage his ego, the art of finding joy and balance in life, even when you suddenly get older. And this applies to everyone, not just climbers. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for being here and spending time with me for uh, for my YouTube talk show. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, yeah. happy to be here with you. Yeah. Uh, I'm every time. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm every time trying to. When I'm shaking hand with the people, uh, I'm just thinking about the kind of touch and about tightness. And the mountain is usually I pretty tough. But do you have the sense in your hand? You need to keep both the power and the sense as well. Well, I think in climbing, actually, the interesting thing is, you know, you have to save your energy. So you need to know how to hold on as little as possible uh -huh, to uh -huh. save your energy. So, so you are not wasting the time. Yeah, even so I'm shaking. saving. I'm not shaking it too hard. Yeah, yeah and, and <laughs> you are kind of people <laughs> who are meeting. I don't want to hurt your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And I believe that you can. Uh, do you do you have some special your type? for exercising your fingers, because this is very special. Well, for, for, for me, you know, I, I'm a little bit different than I think most climbers. I never really trained very specific. Mm -hmm. um, I think a big advantage from, for me, I started climbing very young, and so my body adapted to climbing. And yeah, I think just climbing is the best way to train for climbing. They both succeed, but in the end, it took them both about six months to achieve their goal. So my point is that you have different, different approaches and everyone has a different way of um, accessing you know, their, their motivation and, um, and yeah, they're the best version of themselves. So yeah, um, yeah. I think it's, yeah, similarly, like this man was just asking, I mean, it's everyone has a different, different way. We're all different and unique mm -hmm. uh, individuals. Uh, same, same with learning or you know some people learn better in a classroom others so people prefer learning just in you know so in life uh -huh. for example for myself i i remember in school taking spanish class mm -hmm. and i had really bad marks you know for me it was just like unnecessary data to memorize uh -huh. in school uh -huh. and then of course when i was in spain and i was with climbers and you know, girlfriend usually works very and well. Girl, girlfriend, girlfriend, yeah, girlfriend yeah, in this uh, language, of course, <laughs> that that helped as well. But but it was a totally different situation. It wasn't just like useless uh, information to memorize. It was something that I, I wanted to learn. You know, and so I think for me in climbing, it's similar. It's like uh, I prefer to have my objective mm -hmm. in front of my face to know why I need to try so hard. So the goal is to recognize yourself, find how to handle with yourself I, I and think, then do yeah. it that way. I think climbing is, is cool like this. It's, um, of course, now it's a very big sport. It's competitive. It's in the Olympics, but um, inherently it's a very individualistic sport. You know, we, mm -hmm. everyone has mm -hmm. a different approach. And, and this is, for me, this is the beauty of climbing, that uh, there's no right or wrong way. You know, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. um, whatever works for you. Yeah, so. yeah. You started at 12, probably. Yeah, I started in uh, 1993. And during all that time, you didn't want to be just F1 racer or astronaut or teacher, doctor, anything. Just still, you recognized it. No, I had I had moments uh, where I I questioned what I was doing in my life for sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of moments. Tell uh, me about the dialogue. How it was? Um, what happened? I mean, I think. Uh, for, for myself, and I can imagine uh, anyone who's r something like climbing or whatever activity, it really defines who you are. Yeah, yeah. It's also natural to really question, sometimes question, like, you know, yeah, question this, this, whole, th this whole thing, you know, for me, uh, from a young age, I had a lot of attention, a lot of 
expectation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in climbing. And so there were certain moments when I questioned maybe there was uh, other things in life to explore. And, and I think... That's it. Um, yeah. yeah, we're... We're like not just two-dimensional people, you know. Mm, mm, mm. Life is very. Uh, Th this is what I have on my mind. Life is very uh, broad, and there's a lot of thing, lot of things to experience. So I've always been open to uh, embracing new experiences and mm -hmm. trying to grow. But ultimately, I always come back to climbing because mm -hmm. I love it so much. It makes me happy, and thank thanks to climbing, I've had so many experiences. And actually, the interesting thing is that. Um, through climbing, I've learned like so many other things in my life, you know, mm -hmm. so I think this is the interesting thing. It's, um, we don't have to let that one thing define us completely, but it, I mean, it is a, a, climbing is like a window to the world. I mean, it's a way to travel, it's a way to, to learn so many things. And so you don't feel it two-dimensional, you feel it really wide as life is. And as well, yeah, for is. me it's, it's incredible, you know, I mean, I live, I, I'm from California, but I've lived in Europe for, you know, over 15 years and, you know, it's taken me all over the world and I've learned, I mean, my, most of my education has been through traveling and experiencing mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, in recent years, you know, I started a company, I'm learning about, you know, this whole world of business, you know, I've learned different languages. Um, yeah, All of the different interactions that I've, I've had seen. have been through climbing, yeah. but I've learned a lot of life lessons yes. along the way, yeah. you know, and uh -huh, I think uh -huh, uh -huh. this is the cool thing. Um, and that's why I, I titled my presentation Climbing as a Life Journey, because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we're just going through life and learning as we go. And climbing is kind of the vehicle mm -hmm, through mm -hmm. which uh, I've been able to experience those things. I like that approach. That, that's so. good. That's good. As you are from California, have you been surfing? So yeah, I grew up surfing. Yeah. I grew up, um, I'm from Santa Cruz. Yeah. So it's really like a surf, surf town. And you like water? I love water, yeah. yeah. You know, because when I've been just watching uh, several of your routes, uh, so often you are swimming or mm -hmm. <laughs> bathing during that, <laughs> that I think yeah, that man must love water, yeah. otherwise it's impossible. Yeah, well I think this is why for sure I, I love deep water soloing so much. It, well, it's beautiful as for picture, it's beautiful as a place, the conditions are nice just uh, as for being, but the humidity can change something, I think. Yeah, well, as you can see today, it's quite humid here yeah. as well, so it's, um, uh, I think everyone, you know, we have, we're conditioned by our, our past, you know, but um, I think many people, they um, somehow were introduced to climbing, maybe before climbing gyms. Mm -hmm. They were introduced to climbing, maybe they had some connection to the mountains or something. Mm -hmm. And in fact, my connection was to the sea, you know, yeah, to the yeah. ocean. You, you, and went, then, you are a beach girl, and a then, beach man. <laughs> and then so through, the, through climbing gym, that's how I came in contact with, with climbing. Mm -hmm. And then I was going more to the mountains. Yeah. But then when I um, was hearing about deep water solo and, and mm -hmm. I tried it, and I really br bring in both of those worlds together. For me, it's like the perfection, you know, it's like the, you know, the ocean and the mountains together. It's the, the best combination. So. I understand, I understand. Tell me, you know, I have been. Oh, <laughs> this is the train not far away, so maybe sometimes some train yeah. will interrupt our, our interview. Uh, I have been watching uh, when you have been climbing El Pontas in Mallorca, uh, Pont de Arc, and the others. And I'm thinking, uh, what is happening just in these few seconds uh, when you are just falling down? Because you are, f uh, my imagination, you are fully focused on a, on a stone then something happened, you are falling down and you probably should somehow shape your body just to not mm -hmm. fall flat and uh, you should maybe hold breath and start immediately to uh, re-coordinate yourself or it's just going by itself, you don't think about it. I mean, I think f uh, a little bit of both, you mm -hmm. know, you have to 
have some experience, yeah. you know, how to fall properly. Uh, which, which you probably have from and, California. And, yeah, and I, I've always, always loved that from when mm -hmm. I was a kid. But it's true that when in those moments it happens so quick mm -hmm. that, you know, your body, your instincts have to react. But I think also you always have to be a little bit cautious. I mean, this is, there's an element of risk mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. than in sport climbing. Mm -hmm. So you, it's, it's more similar to bouldering in this way. Like mm -hmm. when you're bouldering, you never want to put yourself in a situation when you're going to fall on your head, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, even from three meters, you could, you could die, you know, if That's you fall right. on your head. So yeah. it's the yeah. same thing. You just always want to be, you know, aware of your body and how in the, That's it. the, your, the body position, how mm -hmm. you're going to fall. Mm -hmm. Always have that in the back of your head so that you, uh, yeah. Because don't. sometimes it's pretty high, the fall from, from the arc to yeah. the water. Some, so, yeah, sometimes uh, I've climbed quite high. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I feel um, maybe it's, I have quite a bit of experience doing it. No. I yeah, I've know how to enter the water quite mm -hmm. well. Because, uh, I can imagine uh, the opposite side, that maybe just being in the water you started to defocus from the from the rock that you even in the water started oh all right i'm here uh, it stopped i think uh, the the incredible feeling beyond falling is when you're climbing and you know the waves are crashing into the rock yeah. and sometimes you can actually feel the like the, when the waves hit the rock, you can feel like the vibration uh -huh, sometimes, uh -huh, and it's uh -huh. like such a powerful feeling. That's great. And it's like uh, a lot of people here ask me if I uh, ever did any like mountaineering or alpinism. And for me, this type of climbing over the sea is actually very similar, a similar mindset. So mm -hmm. when, when you're in those positions and you feel the really the energy of nature and how powerful it is and how small you are. Um, it's really a incredible feeling, mm -hmm. and a little bit. It can, it can be it can be scary, you know. But this is the exciting game, a little bit of uh, mind over matter, or or learning how to, you know, master these certain situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but it's cool. Like uh, for me, I, it's like doing alpinism, but in a bathing suit. Okay, <laughs> and this kind of balance, this is the driver that is sending you back and back. Because I don't believe that it can be only ego. I don't believe that must be something more behind, which send you there again. And yeah, yeah. No, for me, it's uh, so I love climbing, whether whatever. I love traditional climbing, bouldering, sport climbing. Um, most of the year, I live in Catalonia. Mm -hmm. I live in Barcelona, and I climb mostly sport climbing, or now in the gym, we have a, a very nice gym that we built. Pretty big, it's, beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's a really incredible facility. Um, but always, like, from May until October, I'm always going to Mallorca to climb mm -hmm. over the water. And it's really like, a, yeah, it's a whole other level for me of a, it's a very special feeling. It's a yeah, place yeah. where I can really, uh, disconnect and connect with disconnect from everything and yeah. connect with myself. Yes. You know? and, uh -huh. um, and it's really beyond the, as you said, the ego side of climbing because I think it, it should be there it's, in presence somehow. It's, but it's a very mm. abstract style of climbing. You know, mm -hmm. usually when we climb, you have uh, different routes that we follow. It's a line of bolts or something, and there's always a grade. You know for that climb and it's usually like I don't know there's always a goal mm -hmm. yeah and for me when I go climb over the sea it's oftentimes it's just like uh, going out into nature and it's a huge blank canvas mm -hmm. and just you know uh, just interpreting nature in the moment and it's very pure in this way it's very very pure and uh, yeah, to be in this beautiful place uh, with the sea and the perfect rock and um, yeah, it's just, it's very abstract. So mm -hmm. it's, I think it's a hard style of climbing for most people to understand. If you go there, you don't really know where to go. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this is kind of the cool thing. It's like you go wherever 
You Good feel like you're wherever you, you want to, and it's um, and there's in this way there's no rules. When I saw your videos, I think I, I saw you just finishing the route. You are not just a type of man just screaming and jumping. I I it feels for me, or I have the impression that you just finish the route and say, "All right, that's cool, it's finished." <laughs> and you sit down and enjoy the place and okay, it's nice. Is it somehow like that? What do you feel? It depends, you know. I think it depends. Sometimes, uh, sometimes there's a lot of adrenaline is it, and, is it? and there's it's really exciting and overwhelming. Okay. And sometimes, yeah, it's, I, I think it depends on each, each moment. Each route is different. But um, I mean, the, the truth is, like most of the time. Uh, as climbers, we don't succeed. You know, mm -hmm. we're failing most of the time uh, in a in the technical way of like getting to the top of the route. It's, I think, yeah, climbing for me. It's like uh, always when I go, I try to find the small success in mm -hmm. each day. You know, mm -hmm. in each each climb, and uh, always looking for some small improvement, something new that I learned and. And the truth is, like, even when you do succeed on a, on a big climb, this uh, satisfaction doesn't last for very long. So it's like you always do that and then you're thinking about the next one, you know, half an hour later or something. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think it's, climbing is a perfect metaphor for life in this way. It's like the process, you know, um, the journey. It's like uh, the, as we, you know, it's in that struggle. Um, so it's, uh, in fact, when we get to the top, this is almost the, the end of the process. So it's almost mm -hmm. like a... It's over. Oh, yeah, it's almost uh, sad it's so in a way. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because when you have a, such a beautiful line like Espontas yeah. or something like that, yeah, it's almost like sad when it's finished. Then you're like, okay. no, uh, don't, I can't do this route anymore. <laughs> you know, so. I appreciate very much that you speak so deep that you accept my questions to soul and to the approach to life. Because I think that one side of climbing is, uh, well, the sport side and uh, the side of achievements, but I think that this is a way of life. And each climber has it for himself. Somebody is really there for ego, driving, just trying. And every moment when I read uh, an interview with you or I saw videos with you, I think, well, this man seems to me that he, he has the balance and he, he is looking for that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have an ego too. And I, I of course, I'm an athlete and I want to push myself. And, uh, but, you know, I think climbing is much more than just a sport. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course it's a sport. I mean, and it's really it's cool to see our sport develop to where it is now. And it's fun to play that game also. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's also, I think, uh, it's it's also cool to, I don't know, experience it beyond just uh, beyond just that, I guess. So it's a real like way to, yeah, live your life, you know, and explore new new places and and yeah, I mean, it's cool. I mean, I've been climbing almost thirty years, and I was. Um, I'm, I'm more passionate about climbing than ever. Still. And, uh -huh. and I mean, I was talking with, with this guy, Igor, last night. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He was climbing here f since 1970. You know, I mean, it's incredible, you know, that, that uh, an activity like, like this that you can do for your whole life, you know, mm -hmm. it's really incredible. And we're all very fortunate to, to uh, be climbers, you know. I, I would prefer that than golf. <laughs> I think you're climbing is better. <laughs> you are friend with Adam Ondra. You both yeah. are friends. Yeah. Uh, uh, I have been filming with Adam Ondra. We made a series for television okay. and it was great just to be with him for almost almost one year. We've okay. been meeting in Balkan and he was just looking for new routes and he has been just making the first the first climb of, of several routes in Balkan. It was great, it was a very interesting experience. How it works when you both are climbing together? Are you inspiring each other or competing or sometimes a little bit cheating? How is it? <laughs> um, well, I mean, we we didn't climb together so much in recent years, but uh, I think we 
we had a very special experience together on La Dura Dura, you know, mm -hmm, this route mm -hmm. in Spain that I bolted that I thought was maybe too difficult for me. Mm -hmm. And I sh you know, showed it to Adam, and then in this process he showed to me that, That's great. that I was capable as well. And That's I think great. it was a really special exchange between us. And uh, I think, yeah, reflecting on that, it was a really unique moment in climbing. I think that we, I mean, now since then, that was about nine years ago or something like that. And I mean, now it's amazing to see how many incredible climbers there are. I mean, mm -hmm. there were before, but now, I mean, climbing has evolved a lot since then. And it's really incredible to see. But in this moment, I mean, we were the two best climbers in the world. And mm -hmm. we were there trying at the same cliff on the same route together and um, like, yeah, joining forces to push the, the limits of climbing. And, That's right. And I think, you know, on the other hand, it was like, you know, two different generations in a way and, and kind of passing of the torch in mm -hmm. a way. And, mm -hmm. and I think it was mm -hmm. a really beautiful experience for both of us. And um, it was really like a special, special moment for, for myself and I, I think for Adam as well. And um, it was, for me, of course, it was, uh, I knew it was an inevitable thing, you know, for me, mm -hmm. for, I don't know, almost 15, 20 years, people tell you that you're the best climber or mm -hmm. something. And, oh, I never really got used to that. It's a little bit of a strange thing to hear. But it's nice to hear. Yeah, it's nice to hear that. But uh, so anyways, it was very obvious that, you know, Adam was taking things to the next mm -hmm. level. So it was an inevitable situation. But yeah. for sure, there was a moment when I realized that perhaps I could do the route before him. And mm -hmm. there was this element of like, wow, that would be interest or that would be kind of cool. You know, there was, a, there was for sure an element of competition, you know, I think, uh, um, I mean, like I said, I, I'm an athlete and I'm also have an ego and, I, That's and right. I, think, I think it's also natural to be competitive and it's competition brings out the best in us, you know, or the, yeah, yeah. oftentimes. So it was a really, it was really cool to, to explore that. And uh, at the same time, uh, I remember in, in distinctly in that moment when I realized that perhaps I could do the route before him. And then I became really nervous mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and it stopped being so much fun for mm -hmm. me because then I started to enter like more the perhaps the ego and stuff like uh -huh, that. And uh -huh, uh -huh. so for me, it was a really interesting process. And when um, when he did it first was was really cool because I think, you know, he he deserved it, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, it was a chance for me to experience climbing in a new way. Okay. And for me, it was really cool to discover that uh, without being the best, mm -hmm. uh, my passion for climbing was the same. You know, I still That's wanted right. to That's right. still wanted to do the route just as much. And it felt really cool to um, discover that for myself, mm -hmm. because I think there was some side of me that was was uh, I didn't know if I would want to continue climbing if I was no longer the best, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so it was really cool, this personal discovery in this way that like, okay, that that's all right. It's, it's yeah. not really that important. And yeah. I, it was like a confirmation for me to know that I'm climbing for the, the right reasons, I guess. So yeah. Yeah, it was a very cool experience. And, and I think I, I learned a lot from him. And I think mm -hmm. I would imagine, you know, he learned some stuff from me too. So. This is great. Very cool uh, exchange and a moment in climbing, I think. Yeah, I like it very much. What did you say? All, <laughs> all about it, really. And I admire that <laughs> almost confession <laughs> you said now because I, I, I think it's pretty difficult moment, and it is great if you can handle it the way uh, as you said now. The yeah, I think you have to embrace. Uh, you know, we have to embrace where we are in our lives, mm -hmm. right? And it's natural to. You know, we're all um, different, different age, you know, but we're all um, getting older <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, it's just natural and it's natural that there's new people coming to the sport. And I think it would be, it would be kind of, not, not to, for me, I'm 
always going to try to push myself mm -hmm. and to try to be at my maximum level. It's just what I love. But to try to hold on to, to something, you know, I think that's the, it would be, would be a mistake, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to live in the present, embrace, you know. Yes. It's like, uh, yeah, if we're in summertime and if you're, you only want it to be winter or something, you know, you have to embrace summer when it's summer and winter when it's winter, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, otherwise you're just going to be miserable, you know. That's right. <laughs> so. That's right, that's right. Uh, you know, when I've been preparing for this meeting, I was thinking, well, the man is over 40, what he will do with the next half of his life, <laughs> you know it. Uh, the question is useless. Uh, you will have it clear. Uh, of course, you cannot say and anticipate what will happen, but you are ready. I mean, it's cool to see... Um, I, I don't remember his last name, but this, this man, Igor, like he's, he did one of the first ascents here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, you know, it's so cool that you can climb for your whole life, and I think, uh, regardless of even just climbing, this, the the same mentality of having projects, of having goals, mm -hmm. and having, I mean, for me, it's very much like a creative process. You know, like having an idea to do something, mm -hmm. whether it's a new route or it's a, you know, a new business or or okay. or whatever okay. it is. You know, okay. like a. Mm -hmm. Having some, being inspired about something, and then working to realize that dream. Okay. And I think that's the, that's the important thing to always have something that, you know, whether it's like a project in your garden or something, mm -hmm. to, you know, mm -hmm. want to build something cool or something that motivates you, you know, that you're inspired by, and and realize these projects. Yeah. And I think this is the way to. Um, that, that's that's, that's my way, like for it. sure. I like it very much. Uh, but honestly, I must say, I have prepared some different material. Now we are talking about you being an honest, nice guy, but I made a notice. <laughs> it was 2001, München, and you had a trouble that you didn't pass a <laughs> drug test, <laughs> having THC in your blood. Uh -huh. It was marijuana. Yeah. A really so bad man is sitting in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> How it was? How it was? Tell me more. Uh, why I'm asking? Oh, no, l l let's start you. Tell me more about it. Um, well, I, <laughs> I guess I was, um, I had just climbed Biography, you know, it was one mm -hmm. of the first routes, yep. 9A plus in the world. Yeah, and just after that, you, just you after came that. to championship yeah. to... So I was Michigan. kind of uh, maybe celebrating a little okay. bit before, <laughs> after that and... Yeah. So, so, so uh, after party, you came and won uh, the championship. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Having yeah. a little bit of marijuana in blood as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know when I have find that information? It was an article that was written about about the changes of rules in uh, climbing. And the author wrote there that this is the moment when uh, climbing starts to be kind of professional and uh, in the future probably even Olympic sport. Okay. And they said, well, this is the moment. And they started to make it pure, to make it so pure to be possible to put it to the same line with all the other sports and finally maybe reach the Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. And it, it finally happened. And do you agree with that uh, idea or with that construction? Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I mean, um, I'm... I think it's so cool that climbing is a Olympic sport now. I mean, mm -hmm. it's an incredible um, something that, as climbers, we can all be very proud of. That you know, uh, this. I mean, when when I started climbing almost 30 years ago, climbing felt like a small family, you know, and mm -hmm. that feeling still is there. But mm -hmm. now it's obviously much bigger, and that it's an Olympic sport is something that we can all feel really proud of. I think. Um, and and the cool thing about climbing is that you can also it's not just a, a it's not just a competitive sport you mm -hmm. can do it uh, in a lot of different ways right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's that's really cool too yeah. and so I, I mean I don't know I, I think the the topic of doping is I mean it's a very big big conversation I guess and yeah. I don't really yeah. I'm not an expert on on any of that, but mm. I don't think, you know, 
THC is a it's definitely not a performance enhancing drug. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but but, 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 um, but I think obviously uh, climbing deserves to be in the Olympics, and uh, obviously it makes sense that mm -hmm. it should in this uh, arena should be held to the the highest standard of you know competition, and that's that's clear. Yeah, so. uh, you know I understand it, and I understand both sides. I understand the open family kind of uh, of the mountaineers and climbers being together and i understand the straight line of the mm -hmm. purity of olympic sport yeah. and i was wonder if you are not missing uh, something or if you are all right with that because sometimes i hear anybody who say well once the climbing is uh, olympic sport it lost everything it's and not I, there now well i think i think uh, one of the interesting things about climbing is that it is it always has been like a like a counterculture sport um, and it's been a sport where a lot of eccentric people have come mm -hmm. to, to the sport because it's not like a tra uh, traditional sport like I don't know the mainstream activities mm -hmm. that most people do and I think there is a there's a lot of interesting tradition in our sport of people that are it, I mean, it's a little bit inherent in climbing that it's uh, going against the the grain of of what uh, are following the path less traveled, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I think there's some there's some part of climbing that's really beautiful that it's uh, it's really about being free and not not doing something because you want to go to the Olympics or something like that. It's about doing your exploring having your own adventure and uh, like there's a big history in our sport of yeah all of these eccentric characters that yeah. that if you, that aren't um, that are not trying to follow the the the, gr the grain of society they're going mm -hmm. out and exploring doing their own things and I think this is one of the the things that's very special about climbing that yeah I don't think it, we're going to lose it, but it's something that as climbing becomes more mainstream, that uh, it's changing for sure. Yep. And I think that that's part of the I, the spirit of climbing that I definitely don't want to see disappear. Yep. And I think it's important to, um, it's great to see that our sport is on this uh, this level, this you know Olympic arena, but it's also important to not lose sight of where our roots are, you know, and to come, you know, to be in nature and to, you know, learn to, I don't know, climbing is a very primal activity in this mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's much deeper than any man-made competition or something like that. And so I think uh, uh, would be tragedy for that to, to be lost, you know. Right. So I think, uh, I don't think it will be, but I think in the end you can, um, you can do whatever you want. If you want a uh, high level mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Olympic competition, you can do it. Or if you want to have a personal uh, adventure in the mountains uh, in your own way, or just go climb above the sea, do okay. whatever you want. I mean, yeah. there's, you can do it all. So that's, that's the cool thing in climbing. Yeah. But, I, but I do cherish the, the side of climbing that is a little bit, um, doesn't fit in with the rest of society you know for me mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. why one of the things that attracted me to climbing um, was that you know I, I grew up in all of the traditional sports I didn't really feel like I fit in you mm -hmm. know I mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in US you know we had baseball and then of course football and American football and all of these things like were mainstream sports and climbing is very you know away from all of that and I think uh, there's something that's magical about that, that for sure I, uh, I want to continue to, you know, share with people so that it's not lost. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Chris, thank you very much for that lesson of uh, finding the way and uh, have the sense for the balance. And uh, that's great. What did you say is the name of your presentation? Uh, climbing as a life journey. You know, that's it's it. not a very that's original, it. but you know, it's, yeah, but it is what it is, you know, this is... But it has a content. In your yeah. eyes, heart and words, it has a content. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.